So let's get started. Today we will look at 10 quick tips for a successful AE pricing strategy. Um, here is my agenda to, for today's slot and I hope you'll find it useful and give you plenty of food for thought. When I am talking I will often refer to auto enrollment or automatic enrollment simply as AE. You can't argue that today's UK payroll landscape has changed forever with the introduction of automatic enrollment. What AE actually means for an employer is that from their staging date or from their deferred date if they're using postponement, all eligible job holders must automatically be enrolled and the employer must make contributions to their pension. All employees must be assessed to determine whether they are eligible job holders, non-eligible job holders or entitled workers. Eligible job holders are those who are aged between 22 and state pension age, earn above the earnings threshold currently £10,000 and work in the UK. All other employees are either non-eligible job holders or entitled workers and they can choose to join the workplace pension scheme. Eligible job holders can also opt out after being enrolled. Basically, AE is something that is optional for the employee, but mandatory for the employer. With AE comes a number of employer, employer responsibilities. So number one, a pension scheme must be set up with a qualifying AE pension provider, and this should be done in advance of your staging date. This should not require a great deal of time to complete. If you have no eligible job holders, you can hold off registering with the pension scheme until you need to enrol someone. Next, all employees need to be assessed at your client's staging date and all eligible job holders must be automatically enrolled into a workplace pension scheme unless you are using postponement. Next, all employees must receive communications within six weeks of the staging date, not just those who need to be enrolled. You must notify eligible job holders, non-eligible job holders and entitled workers, including those who have been postponed, informing them how they have been affected by AE. Now apparently some employers believe that if they choose to postpone all, empo all employees for three months at their staging date, then nothing needs to be done in that three month period. This is not the case, as all employees must receive a communication within six weeks of the staging date relating to the postponement and explaining when they need to be enrolled. If this communication is not issued, then postponement effectively never happened and enrollment must be completed retrospectively back to the staging date, which in itself is a nightmare. There are also a number of ongoing employer responsibilities, such as handling opt-outs, opt-ins and joining requests, making deductions and contributions, monitoring employees each pay period and sending a contribution file to the pension provider. Employers or you on their behalf must also complete a declaration of compliance within five months of the staging date to notify the pensions regulator that they have complied with AE. A lot of companies staging before now would probably have had their own HR people or in-house accountants to help them through the enrolment process. The vast majority of those staging from today will have no in-house expertise. These employers may also not have the knowledge or experience to make informed decisions when it comes to their AE obligations. With the vast quantity of information available, employers are fast becoming overwhelmed with the entire process. These clients will require help understanding the implications for them, their employees and their business. The pensions regulator estimates that 78% of SMEs will turn to an accountant, bookkeeper or payroll bureau. So you have a gift wrapped opportunity and this is business you don't have to go chasing. It is estimated that 90% of an accountant's client base is made up of employers with less than 50 employees and it is from now onwards that these employers will be affected by automatic enrolment. 
Payroll bureaus need to decide if they are ready to take on AE business. With many shying away from offering this as an extra service, bureaus will need to determine what kind of information and support they will offer to help their clients comply with their new AE duties. Advisors may find that a large portion of their employees will contact them very close to or even after their staging date. If a client does not contact you, or sorry, if a client does contact you after their staging date and has done nothing, if their staging date has passed by less than six weeks, get them to issue postponement letters to all employees immediately. Otherwise, they will need to backdate AE back to the staging date. You've probably heard this a lot recently, but AE is presenting bureaus with a unique platform to increase profits. There are a huge number of small and micro employers due to stage between now and 2018, so it will be important to capitalize on this window of opportunity. By offering AE as a chargeable service, bureaus can add additional revenue streams, provide added value to existing clients, and increase the possibility of bringing new clients on board. It further provides a competitive edge to you over other bureaus that refuse to provide AE as a service to their clients. We all know that increasing your, pri your prices is never popular, and you may even risk losing a small percentage of your client base. If you are a bureau, deciding what to charge for automatic enrollment services can be a daunting task. We will now look at a number of strategies and tips to help you successfully increase your automatic enrollment prices. Tip one is to communicate with clients and let them know that you are open for automatic enrollment business. The way in which you communicate with your clients about your AE service offering will play a big part of your success strategy. By explaining your price increase and justifying the benefits for your client, you will naturally be more successful. Clients are more likely to accept the change if they understand the reasoning behind the price increase. A good idea would be to send your clients a pre-assessment overview or a report in advance, for example six months in advance, which details each employee's pensionable pay, assessment work category, and employee and employer contributions. This tool is available free of charge with BrightPay, which also includes general information about AE for your client. So we'll send everyone a link to this report after the webinar. Let your clients know well in advance that AE will result in an increase in pricing. Best practice is to clar clarify your new pricing structure, specify the date which it will come into effect and explain the benefits. You could arrange to meet with your clients and outline exactly what is involved in automatic enrollment and let them choose how much work and responsibility they want to take on themselves. You should set out clearly the respective responsibilities of you and your client. For example, it is important to point out that the client is responsible for keeping correct records of staff earnings and age and making payments of pension contributions on time, but this is something that you, their bureau, could handle. Early and clear communication is key to successfully increasing prices. Your clients will take the news a lot more gracious, graciously compared with suddenly springing it on them. Transparency is the key and you will find your clients less likely to complain if you are clear and concise. It is natural for your clients to be cautious when they are told that your prices are increasing. However, you must be confident in outlining the additional work and expertise required to process automatic enrollment. Step two is to engage with some clients on a personal level and ask for their feedback. Customers want to know that they are, important, they are important and that you care about them and their business. On a one to one level, you should seek advice from your best customers and explain how your business is adapting to the new AE obligations. If you have actively sought your client's input, they are less likely to compa complain as they will feel they are being listened to. This approach will let clients understand that you are trying to be honest and fair. Your clients might complain as they will want validation for their thinking and viewpoint. Listen to their concerns, but again explain why you are increasing your prices by outlining the benefits to them. A good exercise would be to ask yourself 
as a customer how you would like to learn about a price increase. Tip three is to be sure to convey the client benefits of outsourcing AE tasks to you. If you take the opportunity to inform clients about the added value, they are more likely to remember and understand your service offering. It will be important to also explain the value proposition to any staff you have. I suppose they will really be on the front line dealing with queries and questions about the price hike. If your stand understand the change, they can appease clients by relaying the benefits. Make every effort to be as positive as possible by reassuring your clients that they will get the best quality service. Be confident and do not apologize for the price increase. Now the value proposition for your clients. There will be significant time savings for your payroll clients. By outsourcing AE to a payroll professional, your client can avoid investing huge amount of time researching how to comply with AE. The implementation of AE can also be very time consuming if your, client, if your client doesn't have the correct technology or software in place to automate a lot of the AE admin tasks. Costs. Time is money as the saying goes. Without your help, your payroll clients might choose payroll software that doesn't have AE functionality. Even if it does, some payroll providers are charging an additional cost for AE functionality and a further charge to support your clients through the process. By, your, by using a bureau, your clients can avoid costly mistakes and save time that otherwise would have, taken, would have been taken out of their normal working week. So focus on core areas. This is especially important for small and micro employers where their time is extremely precious. Time away from their, their business is money. Outsourcing AE to a payroll professional frees up their energies and enables them to focus on the core areas of running their business. Expertise. Implementing AE may require skills that your client staff do not possess. Outsourcing will provide a level of continuity to the company while reducing the risk of possible non-compliance. Tip four is to avoid charging hourly if possible. Remember as a bureau, you are selling your expertise. If you choose to charge by the hour, you will naturally work less efficiently compared, compared with charging per AE job or per AE client. Realistically, there are, they are only a certain number of hours in each day, so you will want to maximize your earning potential by charging per client. If you're using software tools that allow the automate, automation of AE, it is inevitable that you will work more productively than ever in processing AE and increase profits. Step five is to ensure you cover your costs. Naturally, you will want your increased prices to at least cover any additional costs incurred for processing AE. It is important that bureaus shop around for payroll software that offers automated AE functionality at no extra cost. Some software providers have decided to charge separately for these AE modules or add-ons. Good, good payroll tools such as BrightPay will include AE functionality for free and automate AE tasks, including employee assessment, communications or letters, handle opt-in and opt-out requests, automate postponement and postponement letters, batch process multiple tasks, include a payslip facility and offer support for leading AE pension providers. Ensure that your pricing structure exceeds your operational costs. Step six is to automate and streamline AE tasks. Automating AE tasks provides a, mass, a massive competitive advantage for bureaus in today's payroll world. The faster you process each client through AE, the more you will increase productivity and revenue. Automation reduces processing time, increases accuracy, and reduces human error. AE can be automated by payroll software, which should be included as a standard feature in your current payroll package. Ensure that your payroll software provider will provide all of the necessary functions to automate the employer admin duties. The 
pensions regulator urges bureaus and employers to check with their payroll provider to ensure it will correctly identify the duty you have for each employee and to see if the system will support the requirements of AE. Avoid inefficient or expensive AE software solutions and save time and money. With a combined payroll and AE solution in place, bureaus will benefit from greater efficiency, increased value and improved cost savings. Step 7 is to potentially offer discounts to entice clients. So some payroll bureaus have increased their prices but offered a discount if their clients sign up before a specific date. For example, you could offer a 20% discount if the client signs up one, one month before their staging date. Remember everyone loves a bargain. By outlining a savings opportunity, clients are much more likely to focus on how much they save rather than how much extra they need to pay. It will be important to remember your loyal customers and it would be worth considering promoting a reduced rate for this client segment. For example, if you decide to increase your charges by say 25%, you could then offer a 10% discount to valued customers who may perhaps refer you a lot of business. Successful bureaus are using this discount window as a method of increasing early adoption rate, rates. Tip 8 is to offer a range of pricing packages or levels. By offering a range of pricing packages, clients can evaluate each one and choose the package that most suits their needs. By offering different pricing options, your clients will feel like they are in control. The clients can choose what they want to pay for and what they would like to outsource to you. Keep in mind that the pensions regulator states that 78% of employers will look to a payroll professional to assist with AE. The majority of these employers will want their accountant, bookkeeper or bureau to look after all of the AE tasks. Be sure to increase your prices enough so you won't have to do it a second time in the following year, as this would look unprofessional and unorganised. The prices that accountants and bureaus are charging vary dramatically across the market. It seems to be very much dependent on the number of employees the employer has and the level of AE services the employer wishes to be carried out by the payroll bureau. One popular example is a tier-based pricing structure where clients can choose from a menu of pricing options. This clearly outlines different packages that the client can choose from, including a bronze, silver, gold or platinum package. These prices are in addition to normal payroll charges. Now just bear in mind that this is only an example. Um, it's an example for a client that has 10 employees. It is not definitive and is open to amendment. By introducing a tier pricing structure, this will enable the employer to decide how much of the automatic enrollment process they want to do themselves. If you are already doing their payroll, for these clients, it is unlikely that they will want any part of the AE process and will prefer to leave it all to you. Brightpay will present another webinar later in March where we will look at three simple but effective automatic enrollment pricing plans. These strategies can make it feasible for bureaus to offer AE as a service clients will pay for. Other pricing options are a monthly retainer fee or a priceless option. The, price, the pricing webinar is CPD accredited and details of the next webinar will be included in our follow-up email. Tip 9 is to take advantage of cross-selling opportunities. If you are a company that offers other services such as tax returns, bookkeeping, audits, tax planning, HR services, etc., you will have an opportunity to cross-sell these services, especially to new clients. But offering a related service as an upsell or cross-sell, it can become part of your strategic growth plan. You will find that employers will be happier to consolidate all of their outsourcing services to one person or advisor. This is a great way of increasing revenue from the same number of clients. Basically, you will be a one-stop shop as you will be solving more than one problem for the client. Tip 10 is to take action and just do it. So 
So get out there and make sure your clients know you are providing automatic enrollment as a chargeable service. Your clients will actually be surprised if you don't increase your charges, especially with the additional setup time um, that is required initially. If you are still reluctant to increase your prices, you could decide to only increase your charges for new clients perhaps. Try testing it out on one or two clients to find out what the potential sales barriers may be. It would also be advisable to look at free and paid uh, CPD events that bureaus can attend to make sure that they are up to speed with automatic enrollment. Um, so now we'll have a look at BrightPay's approach. BrightPay is an integrated payroll and automatic enrollment software solution that has been designed to take the grunt work out of automatic enrollment. BrightPay enables you to streamline AE tasks allowing you to benefit from a reduced workload and increased efficiency while providing um, a profit. So I'd now like to hand you over to Vicky for a quick demo showing you just how easy AE can be with BrightPay. In this example we are assuming that the employer or you on their behalf has already registered with a pension scheme. So in this example we will look at NEST. Just to point out, we will, we will release a Smart Pension API function later in the year that allows for direct integration between payroll and pension provider. The Smart Pension API will work in the same way as the Nest API. So thank you, Vicky. Okay, thanks, Karen. So good morning, everybody. Um, just bear with us there now. Thank you. So just to give you a quick demonstration on how BrightPay handles the automatic enrollment um, process for you. So basically the starting point is when you have your staging date. So as soon as you know what your staging date is, this needs to be entered in the software and that is done by going to the pensions utility, clicking on automatic enrollment and entering your staging date here in the designated field provided. Entering your staging date here means that BrightPay will know when your automatic enrollment duties are going to kick in and it will then start alerting you when you reach that pay period. Okay. Once you have set up a pension scheme and you have all the details, um, your pension scheme is also set up in the pensions utility where we are now, and you simply click on add new scheme. So you'll see here that we currently offer dedicated support for 14 pension providers. You'll see the names of those on the screen there. Um, and by dedicated support, that means that BrightPay can produce the enrollment file and contribution um, CSV files for you, which can then be um, uploaded directly into the pension providers um, listed here. So we'll, we'll produce the relevant file specifications for you. Um, as Karen mentioned, Smart Pension will be one of these that we'll be adding to the list um, later on. Um, this list isn't final. Um, as demand um, dictates, we, we can be, you know, be looking at adding more pension providers into this listing. Should you be with a pension provider that we don't offer dedicated support for, all is not lost, you, you can use the other automatic enrollment scheme option here, over to the right hand side, which allows you to set up the pension scheme details yourself. The only thing it can't do is then, you know, what BrightPay can't do is produce the contribution files and if applicable, the enrollment files for you for direct upload into the pension scheme portals. So um, we'll take Nest as an example here. So I'm just going to click on the Nest option. So Nest will provide you with an employer reference number. So I'm just going to type that in. Then within Nest here, if you click into Group, this will allow you to set up your group details. And these need to match exactly how you have set them up with the pension provider. So at the time of setting up Nest, you will have provided um, group, a group name or group names if you have more than one group set up. So you simply enter the group name here. You then select the applicable contribution rates from your drop down. So whether you're using phased minimum, the 2019 minimum contribution rates, for example, or whether you wish to customize these rates. And then once selected, you then have control over the earnings basis. So you can select the standard qualifying earnings basis or again, custom that to suit your business needs. If you have further groups, you simply click on add, add group here. So for example, we may have employees on two pay frequencies, so we may need two groups setting up for them. And again, the contribution types and earnings basis can be set accordingly. I'm just going to save that record. So once I reach my staging date in the payroll, 
So my staging date is the 1st of January in this example. You'll see then that Brightpay will kick in with these little on-screen flags. And if I select an employee, these yellow alerts. So these yellow alerts will bring you through um, to the various options based on the employee's worker category. So Brightpay will automatically assess your employees for you when you reach your staging date. And it will assess whether an employee is an eligible job holder, non-eligible job holder, or an entitled worker. So if we just look at this first employee here, she is being assessed as an eligible job holder. And if I click on view options, I'm given three options based on this worker category. So I can enroll the employee, I can postpone or mark as exempt if applicable. So we'll enroll this employee in this example. So I'm going to click on the enroll button, simply select the scheme from the drop down list. I'm going to pop her into the weekly group and also the applicable tax relief. And then when ready, I click continue. So a useful feature here in Brightpay is the option to batch process employees all at the same time. So you'll see here that at the time of enrolling one employee, I am given the option to enroll multiple employees with the same settings. So from a bureau angle, this will speed things up for you considerably. So if I click on enroll multiple employees, I can say I want to enroll all five. They're all in the same group in the same settings and I click to enroll selected employees. And they're all enrolled all at the same time with a click of a button. Once an employee has been enrolled in Brightpay, um, Brightpay will then automatically prepare the enrollment letter for you to give to the employee. And these letters can be printed, they can be exported to PDF or emailed directly from Brightpay to the employee. So Brightpay uses the Pension Regulators Simplified um, April 2015 templates, and should you decide to print these, the user will be given control over paper size, orientation, etc., as you can see here. So I'll just do a print preview of an enrollment letter for you to the screen. Okay, so the enrollment letter is going to include details of the employee's staging date, what their contribution rates are going to be. Um, their option to opt out should they choose to do so and just some general information about automatic enrollment and what it will mean to the employee. Okay. Again, to speed things up, if you've enrolled multiple employees all at the same time, you can instruct the software to create those letters together as, as, a, as a batch. Okay. Again, you can print, export a PDF or email in bulk. And then once the employees are in receipt of their enrollment letters, you can sorry, instruct the software that this has been done. Okay. So if I return to the payroll screen here, so you'll see I've met my automatic enrollment duties for those employees I've just enrolled. But just take the next employee here. He is an example of somebody who has been an, um, assessed as a non-eligible job holder. And so you'll see if I click on view options here, I'm given slightly different options for him. Um, so I have the option to write to him to um, invite him to opt in, should he choose to do so. Should he wish to opt in, then the opt in option here. And again, to postpone or mark as exempt if applicable. Likewise, um, this is an example of an employee who is being assessed as an entitled worker. And again, my options are slightly different. So again, I have the option to write to the employee and um, inviting them to join. Um, then the join option, should they choose to do so, to postpone or mark as exempt. So Brightpay can also handle postponement. Um, so should you wish to postpone an employee, simply click the postpone option. Enter your deferral day, which has to be a maximum of three months. Okay, and click continue. Again, you can postpone assessment for multiple employees at this point to so avoid having to do it on an individual basis. I'm simply going to click postpone assessment for multiple employees, select them and postpone. Okay, likewise, then Brightpay will automatically create your postponement letters for you. And again, these can be done in bulk for multiple employees, as you can see here, and again, marked as done for all. So if I return to the payroll screen here, all my flags and alerts have disappeared. So I've met my automatic enrollment duties at this point in time, so at my staging date. 
So where an employee has been um, automatically enrolled or they've opted in or they have joined, when you return to their pay slip view here, you'll see that the pension contributions will be applied to the employee's pay slip, as you can see on screen here. If I finalize pay slips as well, I'll just do a print preview of a pay slip, you'll see that every employee who is um, who is in the pension scheme, that, that details of their pension contribution will flow through onto their pay slip for them too. Okay, so where we offer dedicated support for a pension scheme, this means that BrightPay can then produce um, the contributions file, and if it's a pension scheme that also, enrol um, also needs an enrollment file, um, BrightPay can actually produce those for you. And so once you've finalized um, your payroll, if you go back to the pensions utility here, this is where you'll come to produce your enrollment files and contribution files. We're using Nest in this example, and Nest have an API option which allows you to submit your enrollment file for Nest and also your contribution files for Nest directly from BrightPay into your Nest web portal. And Smart Pension is going to work exactly the same way once that comes on board into the 1617 software. So just to show you how the API option works with Nest, um, so if I just click into my Nest here, I simply enter my login details here. I've just popped in some dummy credentials. Um, Nest always require an enrollment file first of all, and this then can be submitted by clicking on enrollment summary here and clicking send enrollment submission. This just takes you through um, a couple of steps. So first you select your employees. At step two, you enter your payment source that you have set up with Nest. Nest are quite strict that you have to match exactly how you've um, entered it in your Nest portal. And at step three, that is a summary of all your information, albeit it looks a bit gobbledygook for you there. And all you do now is click send now, and that will go off to Nest, and you will get confirmation back at the top right of your screen once that has been successfully received. Once you have your enrollment file submitted, um, you are then required to do a contributions file going forward for every pay period um, thereon. And to do a contributions file to Nest, again, this time click on Contribution Summary. Click Send Submission. This time you just asked for your payment due date. Select your employees. Should any employees not have made a contribution in this particular pay period, you can specify the reason for that. And as step four, you're ready to click send now and again to submit that straight to Nest from BrightPay. Okay. BrightPay can also handle um, opt-out requests and also issue refunds where applicable. Um, so if you're in receipt of an opt-out request from your pension provider, all you need to do is go into the employee utility, select the employee in question, and every employee has an automatic enrollment tab here. So I'm just going to enter into that here. So for this employee here, um, say for example, I've received an opt-out request, um, I'm simply going to click on the opt-out option. If I have an opt-out reference, I simply enter it in and the opt-out date and click continue. And basically when I return to my payroll now and go into the next available pay period for her, you'll see that refund of pension contributions um, of, that has already been, she's already contributed, to, that's being refunded to the employee. You'll also see over on the right hand side that there will be a refund to the employer as well of any pension contributions that they have made. So just for your own reporting requirements for AE purposes, you can use the analysis function at any time. And by clicking on new reports, you can create your own reports. So for example, you may want to run a report, um, if I just scroll down here, on, for example, worker category, enrollment date, um, opt-in date, um, join date, etc. Or um, if you would like to maybe just produce your own um, reports on the contributions that have been made, if I scroll down here, you can see here that you can run a report on your employee and employer contributions there. Okay. With staging, um, You'll see in this example here that we've met our duties. BrightPay doesn't stop, you know, um, at that point. It will continually assess your employees for you. Um, so you'll see there that if I just create a new employee here, just bear with me a second. Okay. 
you'll see here that I've just created a new starter in my payroll. So you'll see then that I'm getting the flag here instructing me um, that I have an AE duty to perform for them there. Okay. Um, just to finish, I, I skipped by it, and my apologies there. I did just want to show you the assessment report, um, which will, is useful to bureaus. The assessment report is available in the pensions utility, and you'll see on the um, bar here, you've got assessment report. This will perform um, a pre-assessment for you, as Karen mentioned earlier on in the webinar, um, which is useful to send on to um, clients just to give them an overview of what automatic enrollment is going to look like for them um, and give them an idea of costs. The assessment report here also includes an assessment guide, which is also quite useful to send on, just to kind of it just highlights the different categories um, of, of um, workers for you there. Once you have staged, this um, assessment report will also give you a post-assessment, um, which again is just a snapshot of what happened at your staging date. So again, a useful tool to print out or export and send on. Okay, um, and I'll pass you back to Karen. Great, thanks Vicky. Um, so I suppose you can see there's been a lot of development rate recently in uh, the auto enrollment industry with the introduction of the API tools. And as we, we mentioned earlier on, we will be um, adding the Smart Pension API to BrightPay later in the year, which really will save payroll bureaus a lot, a lot of time. Um, okay, so I'd now like to pass, pass you over to Matt, and um, that completes my part of the presentation today. If you do have any questions so far, please type them into the question bar, and we'll try to get through as many questions as we can. So I'll now pass you over to Matt, who will present how to choose a, a pension scheme that suits your AE pricing strategy. Hi hey everyone. Um, I would just like to start by saying uh, thank you very much for inviting me along here today to be part of this fantastic webinar series. Uh, and thank you to Karen and the team at BrightPay. Uh, we've really enjoyed doing them so far and we're looking forward to doing loads more in the future. So I've been brought in today to talk about the real price of auto enrollment. So we're looking at the real cost of auto enrollment, firstly to the employer. Um, obviously the first thing to look at is the employer's pension contributions. Now an important element here is that the employer um, may budgets not just for the eligible job holders that are under his or her employment, but also um, budgets for the uh, non-eligible job holders who may wish to opt into the scheme. So as an advisor, it is very important to make that very clear from day one to your clients. Next thing to consider is pension providers set up costs and ongoing fees. So the vast majority of pension providers on the market um, are uh, now charging setup fees and ongoing monthly admin and management fees. And we will be going into that in more detail later in the webinar. Also, as was previously mentioned in the, the, the Bright Pay uh, discussion, uh, various providers out there that have auto enrollment payroll software bolt-ons. So there's a number of different um, providers on the market that will actually charge for those bolt-ons and that charge can be quite considerable, so something to take into consideration. Luckily, our friends at BrightPay are not one of those. Um, they actually include the auto-enrollment services as part of their pack package. There's also the additional cost in man-hours, so basically the admin burden of auto-enrollment for the employer. So if the employer does not choose a streamlined and uh, automated system, it could be a potential uh, heavy admin burden for them. Also, importantly, the cost of failing to meet the statutory auto enrollment requirements, and I'm going to go into a bit more detail about that later in the webinar as well. So next, let's look at the real cost of auto enrollment to the advisor. Obviously, the pension providers set up costs and ongoing fees will be a charge that the advisor will have to pass to their clients. And they, that could be quite a considerable charge and could potentially weaken the advisor's relationship with their client. There's also the cost in additional man hours and the admin burden 
uh, to the advisor if they don't choose systems, processes, and providers who are streamlined and automated. Importantly, there's also the cost of loss of business from not engaging in auto enrollment, and I will be looking at that um, in a few slides' time. So I mentioned the, the provider costs. Uh, here is a, a list of some of the key players in the market. Um, the People's Pension now charge a £500 sign-up fee, or £300 if a client comes through an advisor. Now pensions currently charge about £40 per month administration fee. Trust pensions charge £12 per employee per annum for assessment and communications. Creative auto enrolment charge £20 per month administration fee. Standard Life have a £700 setup fee and a £100 per month admin fee. Now, Standard Life and the other legacy schemes are also, it's important to remember, are not guaranteed acceptance. Smart Pension, however, we have a zero setup fee, so we're completely free to the advisor and to the employer, and we have no monthly admin fee or any other management charges. So what is the cost in additional man hours? Employer and to the advisor. What do you have to do? So employer and the, or the advisor have to provide employees with information on auto enrollment. Have to automatically enrol all eligible workers. And eligible workers who want to opt in into the scheme. They have to all opt outs. Submit a declaration of compliance. Have to manage ongoing assessment, calculations, and communications. Automatically re enroll eligible workers every three years. And they have to keep records for six years. So, again, potentially, if you don't pick uh, providers and systems that help you automate a lot of that, that could produce a massive admin. So let's look at the cost of non-compliance. So the pensions regulator are a fantastic bunch of people who have previously been a fantastic educational resource, um, helping people to get their head around how auto enrollment works. But they are also there to police auto enrollment, and the number of cases of penalty notices being issued has increased quite dramatically. Um, and there's a, a range of different penalties that they can uh, levy on, on uh, people that are non-compliant. So there's a fixed penalty notice of £400 that would be issued if you don't comply with strat statutory notices or if there's sufficient evidence of a breach of the law. There is an escalating penalty notice for failure to comply with a statutory notice with a prescribed daily rate of about £50 to £10,000 depending on the number of staff you have. There is a civil penalty for cases where you fail to pay contributions due, and this is a financial penalty penalty of up to five thousand pounds for individuals, or fifty thousand pounds for an organisation. And the number of whistleblowing cases are on the rise. The pensions regulator have made it very easy for the employee to anonymous, anonymously inform them when their employer is not complying with their statutory duties. So the takeaway from this slide is if any advisor is engaging with auto enrollment, it is very important that they understand all the statutory requirements um, for auto enrollment so that they can then convey those to their potential clients and also the potential risk associated with not complying and therefore how important it is to get good advice. So any um, any um, uh, client will also be interested in if it's he's getting a, he or her is getting a good deal for their employees, for the members. So here is a, a member cost comparison chart, and this is year one member charges including admin fees, and it is based on the average UK salary, which is £27,200. So with Nest, the annual fee would be £8.34. With Now Pensions, it would be £18.64. With Creative Auto Enrollment, it would be £24.86. Standard Life, it would be £1.61, but obviously they have um, a, a rather sizable setup and management fee. And with Smart Pension, it will be £1.61. Pence. So, what is the cost to the advisor of ignoring auto enrolment? 
So the research that we have seen and the contact that we have had with the advisor community and with the various events that we've been to have shown that a significant proportion of the advisor community are not engaging with auto enrollment. Um, there was a survey at the end of 2015 done by Aviva of around 2,000 advisors which highlighted some key reasons why there was a lack of engagement with auto enrollment. So the first one, and uh, about 70% of advisors that weren't engaged and came back with this one, was it was not part of their core business model. Also not deemed profitable enough. There was also a, a, a perception of lack of qualifications and expertise from the advisor community. Interestingly, more than half of the advisors said that payroll and data management was the hardest to advise on. What we have come across over and over again is a concern that recommending a pension scheme constitutes giving financial advice. So I would like to highlight that point a little bit further. Our friends at the ICAEW have produced a traffic light guide to regulation. And I've just taken a snippet from the guide here from the green section, which basically means the not regulated, you're allowed to do it section. And I'd like to highlight the two top points. Um, it, is, it is discussion with employers on the relative merits of an auto-enrollment compliant pension scheme and recommending a specific pension scheme to employers and carrying out the transaction. So the takeaway here to the advisors is that auto-enrollment is a safe space to be in. So what are the commercial benefits of auto-enrollment for the advisor? Um, in that previous survey, one-third of the 1,865 advisors survey said that auto-enrollment looks to be one of the biggest growth opportunities of the year. So if we look at some of the benefits of engaging with auto-enrollment for the advisor. Firstly, it strengthens client relationships. Secondly, it can be a profitable additional income stream. Now obviously that was a lot easier when you were dealing with the larger organizations with more sophisticated processes, but it can still be a very profitable income stream as long as you make sure that you work with processes and systems and providers who are streamlined and automated. So an opportunity to acquire new clients. So if there is a, a big swath of the advisor community not engaging with auto enrollment, um, it's an opportunity to take on auto enrollment duties from other clients and then eventually they will bring other um, work to you. It's a huge market. There is around 1.8 million employers still to stage. The biggest gap, which basically translates to a massive commercial opportunity for advisors. So Smart Pension is here to help you profit from auto enrollment. Fast, efficient and hassle-free sign-up process for employers and for advisors. Assessment, contribution calculations and communications are handled automatically and for free. Free to the employer and to the advisor. We're a master trust and we have an independent board of trustees that are both regulated by the pensions regulator. Fund administrators and managers that are regulated um, and registered by the FCA. You have a five star de facto rating and soon to have a master trust assurance framework accreditation. So if we take a, a look at our employer platform, so if an employer comes to us directly, uh, the employer can sign themselves up directly to the scheme in about three minutes. They can manage their full auto enrollment obligations in one place. Our services include assessment, contributions and communications. And if your software already does this for you, we also accept pre-assessed data files. So this platform is particularly helpful for smaller employers who don't use additional third party resources to support their auto enrollments uh, compliance obligations. Um, we also have an advisor platform, which we launched just before Christmas. Uh, the advisor platform is designed for accountants, bookkeepers, payroll, HR, financial advisors, and other advisors to manage a portfolio of clients through auto enrollment. And using the dashboard, you can sign up your clients and then leave them to manage their administration, 
or you can manage their pension administration for them and you can manage the ongoing assessment and communications. Um, the platform also allows advisors to invite other advisors in to manage certain aspects or certain clients um, during the process. So you can actually have an IFA that invites his accountant to come to deal with one specific client. Um, with the employer platform, it also has the capacity to invite an advisor in to uh, take over the process. So this is just a, a slide on uploading employee payroll data. Uploading employee payroll data and payroll data onto the, um, the platform can be individual and in bulk. Payroll can delete incorrect data uploads and correct them prior to making contribution payments. Calendar pay periods can be set to suit your chosen pay period dates. Advisors can use the platform to manage assessments and communications, or they can simply upload pre-assessed contribution data. And Smart Pension accepts CSV files, Excel files, and we also have an API, as um, Karen mentioned earlier, that speaks directly to payroll software. If we first look at the Excel and CSV format, this slide just demonstrates the process through which you go, um, starting with uploading employee data into Smart Pension. Uh, there are nine different stages, finishing with producing pay slips. If we do the assessment for you. Um, then the payroll software with auto assess or, or auto enrollment services using pre-assessed practice format templates. Um, that has five different um, stages you go through, ranging from uploading employee data into Smart Pension to producing pay slips from the payroll software. One is, as we've mentioned, the API link to Smart Pension. Now we we feel this is the way the market is going, and has to go to automate the process and deal with capacity. And we feel it's incredibly important to allow data to flow seamlessly, quickly, without error between payroll applications, payroll bureaus, and us. We have an API, and for those of you out there that are not techie, that stands for Application Program Interface. And that allows us to transfer structured data to allow smooth, quick, and efficient processing of payroll and one-click submission of pension contributions. This is a demonstration of payroll providers who support the practice format. And also at the bottom, there's um, some coming very soon providers. Uh, Bright Pay, our lovely friends, being one of them. If anybody would like any further details on this, please go to www.autoenrollments.co.uk forward slash payroll hyphen support. We also have supplies, uh, providers that integrate di directly with the Smart Pension API. Um, currently, that's Payroo, Able, and MyPay. But coming very soon, again, our friends at BrightPay and Accenture, and also PensionSync. Our an online system, and we've designed to be uh, intuitive and easy to use. But we also do provide support and guidance. So we've got various different um, uh, support and guidance tools out there, including a live chat where you can talk to our team directly. We also have a support telephone line if an employer needs to talk to someone directly. And more importantly, uh, we've just released an advisor platform helpline to help advisors quickly manage their clients and very easily complete the process. And both advisors and employers have access to our online knowledge bank. We also have a host of useful tools um, that are available for employers and advisors. Uh, everything from an auto enrollment planner, to a staging date calculator, to a pensions calculator, and also an educational video generator. So we, um, one of the statutory requirements for auto enrollment is that uh, an employer advises their uh, employees on auto enrollment. If you are managing a, a client, we give you uh, an educational video that you can then, if the advisor can then upload their logo onto and send to their clients. The client can then email that to all of his employees or her employees, and that statutory box is ticked. We've also just produced an advisor marketing pack. So we're aware that some advisors um, may not know how to market themselves for auto enrollment purposes. So we have produced a pack to make that completely easy and simple for you. 
So at Smart Pension, we work very hard to make auto enrollment easier and more profitable for you. Um, I'm here with my colleague Griselda Williams. Uh, Hello. Some of you may have already um, stumbled across Griselda in the previous uh, Bright Pay webinar back in January, how to choose a quality scheme. We're both very much looking forward to building your questions today and to doing more um, more webinars in the future. And I would be very interested to find out from the audience what sort of uh, topics they would like covered in future webinars. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks Matt. We're just give us a second here now. Just going to Okay, just a few slides before we go to the Q and A. There's quite a few questions coming through there. So there we just have a few links to uh, if you want to book a demo, we also have free auto enrollment guides and then there's a link there to our upcoming automatic enrollment webinars. Um, our next webinar is on the 8th of March, which is a Payroll Bureau's Guide to Profit from Auto Enrollment. And we have a few statistics here for BrightPay that we're very proud of. And we're also a preferred supplier for tax assist accountants, and we've been accredited by the Institute of Certified Bookkeepers. So now we'll take our questions. So that there, as I said, there is quite a few questions that have come through. And I think Matt and Griselda are there online to answer your questions, and then myself and Vicky will be here. So I'm going to start working through the questions here. Um, okay, so this question is for yourself, um, Matt. So how do we access the marketing letter that you talked about? What was that? Sorry, I missed the last word. Um, how do we access the marketing letter? Yeah, sure. So my contact details are at the back of the presentation. If you want to email me directly, we can send you the full marketing pack. Okay, great. Um, okay. Da, da, da. Okay. So, and then just another question there for you guys again, but I, I, you mentioned it there on your last slide. How do I contact Smart Pension? So, as I said at the start of the webinar, we'll send a copy of today's recording to everybody, and that will include a PowerPoint presentation with everybody's contact details. Um, so that answers our next question there. So, sorry, um, Matt, another question for yourself. How is Smart Pension funded? Sure. We're, we're actually VC uh, funded um, and we're funded to uh, beyond 2019 and we're quite unique in the market in that the other, the other providers out there, their key asset is their, their uh, members, their lives under management. Whereas we have two key assets. We have our lives under management but we also have our platform because we're the only one on the market that's ha actually um, purpose built and also enrollment platform. So um, we we have just done a funding round and are in a beautiful position where we actually can sit back and be quite choosy about the funders we take on. Um, so we're extremely well funded and we've got a lot of interest from the market. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, this one here, maybe Vicky, this might be one for yourself. Does an employer need to set up a pension scheme if the only eligible job holder is the director who intends to opt out? Okay, um, yes, I mean, where you do have eligible job holders meeting the criteria, you will have to automatically enroll them. If they choose to opt out, then they, they can do, but you do actually have to enroll them initially. Um, yeah, even though you know that they, they may opt out, you still have to go through the, the duty. Yeah, and that's if they are classified as an, uh, an eligible a, a job holder. holder. Yeah. yeah, if you don't have any eligible job holders, you don't have to. You don't have to have a pension scheme in place. Yeah, okay, great. Um, okay, so does, and maybe another one for yourself, Vicky, does BrightPay offer auto enrollment engagement letters as well as the ones for general payroll services? No, we don't. Unfortunately, BrightPay really kind of kicks in from staging, um, so we handle the, the process from the staging date for any pre-staging letters, um, and we don't cater for. Um, I think there's a lot of letters that are available on the pensions mm -hmm. regulator website that you can send out to your, to your clients. That you can yeah send out to your clients, or that the pre-assessment um, 
report that we have on BrightPay is quite useful and a lot of our, our payroll clients or our payroll bureau clients are using that to send to clients to let them know about automatic enrollment. Um, so the next question, I think I might, I might take it myself. So can a bureau have BrightPay branded to them, I think is what Elaine was asking. Um, no, you can't set up BrightPay as, as your own brand. Um, I know that there is, we are working on um, an employer self-service tool that I think will allow the, the Bureau to brand it um, as their own. That could be for uh, to send to the employer as well. So it would be like an employer portal where you can um, you know, access holidays and annual leave request forms and then the employee can also access it. And that's going to be released over the next few weeks. Um, and I think there is a function there where you can brand the self-service tool under your own branding. Um, so, da, 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 so another one here, I think Vicky, um, for yourself, does the software work for multiple companies? Yep, it does indeed. Um, it's, it's basically, you can have one company in BrightPay, you can have unlimited companies in BrightPay. So pricing-wise, it's eight to nine pounds plus VAT for each tax year for um, a one company license or 199 pounds plus VAT per tax year for a bureau license. And bureau simply means unlimited companies. There's no limit to how many employers you add into the software. Okay. Um, this might be a question for, for both of us, um, for yourself, Matt, as well. So how does pension refund work? Do you want to answer that one, Matt, actually, from a smart pension point of view? Um, I'm just going to bring my colleague, Grisel, oh, in. No problem. Hi there. If I understand what you mean by pension refund, is that um, it actually could, could the person who issued that question be a put a little bit more information in their question? It's quite a generic statement. Okay, okay. So I'll, I'll wait for that to come through, Griselda. Um, okay. So, next question. Um, can you do a, the assessment report for potential clients? Um, you can. Um, in order to be able to do an assessment report in BrightPay, you will need to set up the company and also have the employees in. The assessment report is based on a on a pay period. So you, you basically you're going to choose what pay period you're in when you do your assessment report. So you will need payroll data in BrightPay. Um, yes, I mean it can be done. There would be a little bit of setting up and groundwork to do though to do it for potential clients. You have to get everything in BrightPay. Yeah, I suppose it looks it looks yeah at all of the information that's already in BrightPay and then. Um, makes uh, gives us that overview of what auto enrollment will look like at the time of staging. So it would probably be better if all of the information was in if they were a current customer. Um, so the next question is um, what does API stand for? So I suppose what API means it's a direct integration between payroll and pension provider. I suppose it's very similar, a lot of people say it's very similar to how RTI works, where you're allowed to send your, your data straight away from the payroll software. So if we didn't have an API tool um, for Nest, for example, and what you'd have to do for every client, every pay period is export your data and then open up your, your Nest web, web portal and upload your information. But the API tool or direct integration allows you to do that um, data submission from within the, the payroll software itself. Um, would you be happy to, to say that, Matt and Griselda? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's Just good. for a little de definition, it, it stands for Application Program Interface. Yeah. Um, and for any very technical people out there, mm -hmm. our entire website and our platform are all work off our API, which makes it incredibly efficient and incredibly smooth. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, it really, it, it, it'll be a very useful tool when we have um, Smart Pension API in BrightPay for any bureaus that have employers that use Smart Pension. 
because it'll save them an awful lot of time every every pay period. Um, yeah, it basically creates a one-click submission of pensions contributions, so it's seamless. Exactly, exactly. Um, so this one here, um, maybe for Vicky, mm -hmm. um, does BrightPay have an integration with a true potential pension provider? Um, at present, no, but we are currently working with True Potential. We have all the information in from them. We have the file specifications in for them, so the programmers are just working away on that. So it is coming on board. Um, I checked with the programmers the other day, actually a few days ago. Um, our 16, 17 software is due for release. I think we, we penciled in the 22nd of March as a release date. Um, if it isn't in the first release, then almost certainly it will be in maybe the next release. So it may not be there straight away um, in March in three weeks' time, but um, yeah, we will have it in the 1617 software. Okay. Um, so another one for yourself, Vicky. Does BrightPay hold a record of letters sent regarding AP to employees? Um, and we might just need a little bit more information on that question. At present, um, you... Basically, as you may have seen in the demonstration, once you've issued a letter to an employee in AE letter, you can tell the system that it's done. So the mark is done option is really bright pain knowing that a letter has been sent and the, the um, employee is in receipt of it. Um, you can view those letters at any time in bright pay as well. Um, now, what we are hoping to do um, is that we're having an employer portal um, coming on board in the 1617 tax year and that will enable employers um, or people to upload pamphlets and reports etc into a cloud um, and one of our aims is to actually be the option to be able to put all the AE letters into the cloud as well for you. Okay thanks Vicky. Um, so I think this is a question for both Smart Pension and BrightPay. Um, how are you set up to deal with the, the capacity crunch? Um, I suppose from, from BrightPay's point of view, we are consistently um, releasing like online help videos and guides on how to use the software. We also have free support for our customers, and we've recently hired a few new support members to really deal with the capacity crunch. Um, and I know our, our support team are they have a really, really high customer satisfaction rate. I think it's it's 99 point something percent, but it will, we'll just say 99 percent. <laughs> so um, we're very much on board to trying to help people as, as much as possible. And that's one of the reasons that we do these webinars as well, is to tell people about automatic enrollment and try to tell them what they need to do to help them along the way. Um, so yourself, Matt and Griselda, do you want to take that? Yeah, sure. As well? If I give it just a very quick potted history of Smart Pension to answer that question. So we came into the market um, a bit late to the party. We came in in May of last year. Um, but we did that on purpose because we spent two years designing our, our platform and doing uh, market research. Um, but uh, as an aside, even though we came in in May of last year, we've already taken about 80% of the market, which is, I think, I'm sure you'll agree, fairly impressive from a standing start. But we came in with a business plan that was designed pretty much from now until um, the end of 2018. We were designed for capacity. Um, we've got a purpose-built platform that is designed for capacity. Uh, from a technical point of view, we use a load-balanced cloud-based application, which basically means as capacity increases, new servers just pop up automatically. So we're immune to any sort of technology, uh, technology capacity. Um, we use the world's largest fund administrators, and the reason that we chose those is because they are used to dealing with very high volumes of transactions, up to 65,000 a day. Um, and we've got great expertise in, in capacity businesses. Um, one of our founders uh, has run, has founded and successfully run a number of very successful online businesses that uh, were uh, related to dealing with huge amounts of transactions. So he comes with a lot of expertise in that field. So I think we are the only providers on the market that are actively excited and looking forward to the next two years because of the capacity. Okay. And every, everything is automated and everything is streamlined to make it as, as simple and quick and easy as possible. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, I think that's going to be, I suppose, a massive issue, particularly for Smart Pension because you guys are, aren't charging um, to use the, the, the pension scheme. So. 
I know that, that you guys are, are really working to make sure you have everything in place to deal with uh, this year and, and next year where there'll be a lot of employers staging. Um, Indeed, we can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so another question for yourself, Matt. How is smart pension different to Nest? I might hand that over to uh, Griselda to yeah. get to that. <laughs> um, we don't spend too much of our time um, comparing ourselves to our competitors. We like to understand our own merits. Um, Nest is a, an, an extremely good and important scheme. Um, it's been set up by the government um, in order to scoop up those who are unable to join other pension schemes. So they, they play a very important role. So I don't want to get into a, a nest bashing conversation at all. Um, however, as Matt said, Smart came into the market with a view, um, later on in the market, with a view to learn from the likes of Nest and Peoples and Now, learn from the technology issues they faced, uh, learn from their offerings, um, and try and develop a system that um, is next generation. Nest um, will accept, it's a guaranteed acceptance scheme. We are a guaranteed acceptance scheme. Um, they don't offer an assessment and communication capability on their system, and we do. So that's the first point of comparison, albeit if you're using the Bright Pay payroll software, you're doing the assessment and communication on the payroll software. So that's not going to be something that figures if you're a BrightPay client using Nest or Smart Pension. The next element which we do think is important is the cost. And this is relevant to today's um, presentation and webinar altogether. Um, the cost to members at Nest is extremely high. They say that they have a point five percent annual member charge ongoing. However, they also have an additional um, 1.8 percent charge on every contribution, which in the first um, few years of being a member of NEST means that your contribution is extremely high. Um, Matt had a page in his presentation that actually looked at the comparison of charges. If I can go back to what you contribute Smart your first year as a member. What you contribute? Sorry, Griselda, yeah. you were just breaking yeah. up there. Okay, I'll could you just move closer and start. just repeat the last couple of sentences there? Yes, I was just talking about the cost to members, and I think this is a really important area here that needs to be taken into consideration. If you join Nest. Um, and you're an average salary of £27,200, you are making a, a, a member charge on top of your contribution of £8.34 in your first year versus £1.61 to Smart Pension in your first year. And this is the um, to do with the annual member charge on members. So I think this is the most important comparison um, for users of Bright Pay. that Nest is very expensive for the member. But there is also one other element to it as well. Um, Nest do not allow you to transfer out your funds if you want to move to another provider later on in your um, pension's lifetime. Um, so your funds will be locked with Nest. And if you're with Smart Pension, you can transfer in and transfer out if you leave that fund um, to transfer it into whatever scheme you, you go on to join if, you're, if your next employer isn't using Smart. But with Nest, you're stuck with them and the money has to remain there. Okay, thanks guys. Yeah, that, that, is going to, that is an interesting point, I suppose, if some employees would uh, move um, positions in, in companies, you know, over a period of whatever, five or ten years, or their um, their work career, that they'll have, pen, you know, a pension bot with the nest, because they can't take it out, and I suppose that's one of the benefits of, of smart pension, that you can, you know, you have access to your funds, so you can bring it with um, Karen, that brought me on to possibly being able to answer the pension refund question that you asked me earlier. Um, pension refund as a term is quite generic, um, but um, I sort of spit out a couple of areas where it might be relevant and, and possibly 
the angle that the, that the, the um, listener was possibly coming from. Um, the key one with the pension refund is if you have been enrolled in a scheme and you've chosen to opt out. If you opt out within that first 30 days or month um, of being enrolled or receiving the letter telling you that you've been enrolled, um, you have one month in which to opt out. And if you opt out within that time frame, whatever contribution has been made in that period will be fully refunded to you by the employer, um, but from the pension scheme um, back into your salary. If you leave the scheme after the opt-out window has closed, that is after that month grace period, the money you've contributed will remain in the scheme. This leads on to the next element, is the ability to transfer any funds you have within an auto enrollment scheme and transfer them out to another pension scheme. This is called transferring out. Um, as we just mentioned, NEST don't let you transfer out, but Smart Pension and various other schemes, most other schemes, will allow you to transfer your funds out of your existing auto enrollment pension scheme into another pension scheme usually without a charge. Each scheme is slightly different. Smart pensions will be, is, is, don't charge for that. Um, later on in, in life, there is drawdown and the ability to take your money out of a scheme. Um, and that you're allowed to do that from the age of 55 onwards at Smart Pension. I think that's not quite so relevant to the question, but I just popped it in there just in case. Um, and the other element is the concept of um, uh, what's it called? Relief at source. Now, some schemes tackle and offer um, relief at source. Um, this is when the um, pension scheme uh, look to HMRC to uh, retrieve the tax uh, payment rather than the um, employee's funds being put into the scheme at a pre-tax stage. Um, Smart Pension don't offer relief at source at this point, but we are looking to possibly offer that in the future. Um, and some other schemes do include that Nest does. That is another point of comparison uh, between Nest and Smart. It's particularly relevant to people who are earning between the 10,000 and the 10,500, which is the tax um, tax level. Um, and it's that amount of money that sits in between. So it's the lower end earners who are being hit by the relief at source issue. Um, but anyone earning over 10,500 doesn't impact. But I think the uh, pension refunds question, I hope I've answered it, probably relates to the ability to either take your funds out if you opted out or want to have the option to transfer into another scheme if you would employer. Thanks. And can I just ask Rosandra as well from a practical angle that, you know, the opt-out refund, does that go back into the employer bank account or does it get deducted from the next remittance? Of how does it work from a practical angle? I don't have the answer to that. Okay, no I problem. Don't have the administration team. That's a good question. I'll find out. Great. Thank you. Um, we've just a little bit of follow-up as well from I think one of the first questions we were asked about directors and being enrolled. Um, yes, I mean, just to expand on that, I mean, directors can be a topic in itself, but yes, if you have a single director with no contract of employment in place, then they are exempt. They do not have to be enrolled. Um, they would just need to inform the pensions regulator of that fact, just to clarify that point. Great. Um, we might just take, I'm just conscious that we're, we're quite over time, so we might just take one more question for Smart Pension. Um, this is from Mark. So, cost is one thing, but how does Smart Pension compare on pension fund growth? I don't know if that's quite a long answer, but uh, <laughs> I'll leave it to you guys maybe just to, to uh, give, a, give us a few points on that if you did have them. Um, I'm going to interpret that question is how do we compare our fund performance to our competitors fund performance yeah um, smart pension invests with well, their default fund is primarily invested in legal and general tracker funds um, other schemes have different investment um, funds now don't tell you um, where they're investing and how it's performing 
Um, similarly, NEST have their own funds. Um, they do provide information about performance. Um, every scheme is different. So over the lifetime, over the next few years, um, more information will become available about how each scheme is comparing with each other. But right now, um, I think everyone should look at each scheme, uh, look at where they're invested, um, and, and make their own choice. Because as fund managers, all fund managers cannot promise um, tomorrow's performance. They can only look at historical. Um, have a look at the legal and general tracker funds that um, Smart Pension are invested in. We have a lot of detail about the breakdown on our website um, and, and take a view. Okay, okay great. Um, so as I said earlier on, um, Smart Pension contact details will be included in the PowerPoint and our follow-up email. So if there was any other questions that we didn't get to or that you didn't ask, you know, you can either contact uh, BrightPay in relation to the BrightPay questions and obviously the guys Smart Pension have their email addresses listed there on the PowerPoint. But I think we're just going to finish up for today. So thanks so much Matt for your presentation. It was very interesting and thanks for thanks Griselda for taking the questions there. Thanks Vicky also for joining me um, for today's webinar and uh, Q&A session. And have a good week everybody. Thanks guys. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.